All right, let's hope this program doesn't crash again. I've been doing this all morning. And it keeps crashing. <laughs> so, yeah, hopefully not this time. Okay, so we got FreeCAD opening up. And we will download our Universal Tube Builder file. So we'll find that on the wiki. Here it is. We can download that. And open it up. So in this video, I'm going to tell you a little bit I'll show you how to use this to generate tubing um, and also uh, a little bit of behind the scenes on how it works. So first thing you'll notice if you're looking at the project tree is we've got a body and a spreadsheet. So let's take a look at the spreadsheet because this is where the magic happens. As a user of this, all you really need to worry about is entering values into this column here, and you're going to enter them in inches. Uh, the spreadsheet will convert it to millimeters, and um, these yellow cells are what are referred to in the uh, modeler by the constraint solver. So we've got tube height, tube width. Let's say we want to do a, a two-inch height, six inch width tube um, by three eighths wall. And we want it to be, I don't know, 48 inches long with a whole radius of, oh, doesn't like that. There we go. Whole radius of a quarter inch. And that's what you need. And oh, uh, let's say you want your first hole to be, I don't know, one inch off the edge, because that's where you need to put a bushing or something. Well, if we go back to our model, check it out. That's exactly what we've got. We've got a 3 8 Oh, that's a silly looking tube. Yeah, so corner radius is based on wall thickness. I don't know if there even exists 3, three eighths wall tube. Something more realistic would be I don't know, 8 inch wall, 3, three sixteenths. This would just deform under any load, but get the idea um, yeah all those all those values we just entered in the spreadsheet are now reflected in our model here and you can do something like file save as or um, save a copy or you can do like uh, create a simple copy if you wanted to have this for um, a larger model everybody should know how to do that I'm not going to cover that here um, so let me show you how this works now that you know how to enter your values. Uh, I'm just going to revert this to a 4x4x12 four by four by so that the file is a little bit more friendly to us. Um, yeah, okay. So if you were, obviously if you were um, taking pre-perforated perforated tubing, there would be another hole over here somewhere. Um, you know, there'd be part of a hole. This doesn't make a hole unless the center of the hole is actually within the edge. Uh, so if we did like 12 and a half, Thirteen. 
One, yeah, there you go. See, since we have a one-inch standoff, um, and these are four-inch spacings. And by the way, the four-inch spacing thing is hardwired into the program, but it doesn't have to be. We'll cover that later. Um, okay, so let's let's just use this, and I'll explain how this works. But let me make the wall thickness a little thicker. So that the um, sketch is a little bit less cramped. So let's look at this. It's a pad. The body is basically just a pad, um, and then a couple of pockets for the first holes, and then a linear pattern for the rest of the holes. Okay, so the first sketch. This is where we start the, the document. Um, centered on the origin. You can see that the um, values here, the uh, constraints are orange, and that's because they're par parametrized. Um, if you use a function to create a constraint, then it'll go from being red to being orange. Um, and let's look at one of them. So the first thing you might notice is it's grayed out, and that this f of x symbol here is highlighted blue and um, if, I, if I hover over that you can see it says a little dimensions.tube width. What does that mean? Alright well let's click on it. There's the same text dimensions.tube width. Um, dimensions is the name of our spreadsheet and tube width is the name of a cell in our spreadsheet. It's actually this one right here. So when you make a spreadsheet and you make these cells that you want to refer to, what you do is you give them an alias. And I have to close the sketch over here to show you that. Um, but okay, so here's this cell. Its name is tube width. How do we set its name? You can either do right-click properties, or you can go to the spreadsheet workbench and click this little tag icon here, or you can press Control Shift A, which I've just done, and it takes up takes me to this tab called Alias. You would also find that by right-click properties, go over to Alias. So we've named it Tube Width. Now this cell can be referred to in any other part of the program as dimensions.tubewidth. That's the call sign for this cell. Um, back to our sketch here. Um, so uh, parametrizing this constraint on the based on the spreadsheet cell is as simple as clicking the function symbol Okay, so I just press discard instead of OK, and now we just have four inches here. So I can show you how I would actually do this. For me, I, the, quick, the quickest way to do it is to press equals. Now that's the same as if I had clicked this symbol. So just like in a Excel spreadsheet or whatever, an open document spreadsheet, you would press equals dimensions dot uh, tube width. Oh, dimensions dot tube width. Okay, well, it's being fussy. Equals dimensions plural dot. T okay, see it's auto filling some of these uh, alias alii aliases that I have uh, created in the spreadsheet. And in general, you'll see that things auto fill. Okay, it says 101.6. What the heck is that about? Uh, well, actually, that's because 101.6 is the metric equivalent to 4 inches. And since this program, I have my settings to show the values in inches. When we go back to it, it'll have converted it to inches, and it's grayed out. You can also see here that I've named this width. Well, what is that? What good is that? I'll show you. Let's say I put a point in. Um, Come on, give me, give me a point. Okay, I'll draw a line. Oh, that was not the point. That was a, uh, okay. Okay, I've got a point in here. And I want to set this dimension 
set this distance off of the uh, origin. One thing I can do is now that I've named one of my constraints is I can actually refer to it. So this is sketch 002. We would do sketch 002.constraints t dot uh, width. And now this value is going to be equal to that value. Um, and obviously this is a distance from center so it's not showing up on the wall because it's this is actually two inches off the center and this is going to be the full four inches. You get that. Um, but anyway, that's useful too. Um, referring to or, or setting constraints based on other constraints within the same sketch. You can do that as well. Okay, sorry, I just uh, paused the video as a concern I would lose it. And it looks like we're all good, so we're going to press on. So some of these other values we have in here, they're really just the same thing. They're just exactly the same as that tube width. It's going to be the calling out the spreadsheet name and the uh, cell name. So hopefully that is clear to you now. And here's, the, here's one where we're actually doing a real formula. Um, you know, we're doing some math in here, and it follows PEMDAS, so you don't really need um, parentheses. I think if you put parentheses in, uh, redundant parentheses in, it'll just take them out. Um, so this this formula should be twice the wall thickness minus 10% wall thickness, so that's what we have. Don't get too hung up on this extra digits here. I didn't type those in. It just put those in, and I don't really care. It doesn't really matter. You know, that's such an insignificant amount. Um, I don't know why it does that. I'm on Windows. If it doesn't do it in Linux, great. If it does, whatever. Um, so you can see you can actually... Uh, oh, oh, here's an example of where I've referred to this constraint wall thickness. Uh, this isn't the spreadsheet value. This is the value in the sketch. So it doesn't really matter, but it's just a different way of doing it. Um, and yeah, so that is that. And this one is probably going to be referring to the, so that, that last, this 4.75 over here refers, is, is named uh, corner radius. That's the outside corner radius. This one's probably going to take, yeah, constraints corner radius and scale it down by three quarters. Uh, that's arbitrary. I just did that because it kind of makes sense. I don't know if that's how it really is in real life. You can get a corner radius gauge and determine if that's accurate. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this, you know, apart from the normal symmetry constraints and equality constraints, uh, the, the parametrized constraints you can see here are all it takes to make this profile. And then... We also need to extrude it by our, our length that we set. So uh, we double click our pad here. We can see that the expression for the uh, length, the extrusion length is dimensions.tube length. And clearly that is here, tube length is going to be this cell, tube length. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Um, and just cancel model. Okay, so now I have this other uh, sketch called tube length. I think I was just checking to see if it worked. Uh, all this is doing is um, grabbing this external edge and taking a measurement. So it has a name, tube length. I'd not sure what I did, why I did that. I think I was just checking to see if it works, or maybe I'll refer to it later. Not that I would have to. I could just refer to this pad. I could refer to pad dot length. And if you rename these, like if let's say you were to rename pad to be tube, you know, or whatever, um, you would then re your con when you would when you wanted to refer to the length of that pad, you would do tube.length. 
So yeah, I hope that made sense. Okay, so the next thing is these holes. Um, and that's as simple as our sketches, <coughs> excuse me, as simple as um, our standoff, which is going to be dimensions.hole standoff. Uh, and we are going to be on the, on the x axis. So that's our other constraint. And then the radius, which you, you provide in the spreadsheet. And obviously, that's just going to be dimensions.hole radius which is the alias for that cell. I'm not even going to show you the next sketch because it's exactly the same. It's just going to be on the other face. And then what we've done, this is the fun part. This is the linear pattern where we determine the number of occurrences of these holes and the length of the linear pattern. So it's really fun stuff. So Let's look at the number of, so, okay, so if you've never done a linear pattern, this is available in the part design workbench, and you can take a couple features and pattern them. So we've got pocket and pocket 001. Really, that's just the hole on this face and the hole on this face. And um, the direction of the pattern is going to be along the x-axis. I hope that's clear. You can see down on your triad in the corner that we're along the x-axis. And the number of occurrences, so this, this seal function, it just means the upper value. Um, okay, let's, let's look that up real quick. Yeah, it just rounds up. That's basically all it is. So we're rounding up. Um, and so, so okay, so this tube length dot constraints dot tube length, that's that sketch that I wasn't really sure why I put it in. There it is. Tube length is the name of the sketch. Constraints and tube length is the name of that constraint. I, I named it tube length. Okay, so we're subtracting our standoff because we're going to determine how much of this tube is in play, and uh, it's not going to be the first the first inch which we did, we set here. Our whole standoff is um, is not in play, and the reason that we're dividing that by four inches is because that is the um, hole spacing. So one thing that we could do is do another thing called hole spacing. And we could say it's going to be 4 inches. And we're going to convert that to millimeters. So that's B9 times 25.4 millimeters per inch. We don't need units on that because um, units are going to be kind of built in. And we'll call this um, Whole spacing. So if we go back here, one thing that we can do is instead of doing four inches, we could do divided by dimensions full spacing. Uh, and that'll be in Times. Okay, well, then we'll just have to multiply this by one inch. Okay, sorry, I had to do something funny with the units there. Uh, but our value is going to be four, just the same as it was. Okay. So all I did there was instead of doing Okay, yeah. Right. Okay, good. Good, 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 good. 
So I just had to divide by millimeters at the end because our value is going to be in millimeters. And we need, a, I think, a valueless expression here. Not really. See, this is in inches, and this is value. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And occurrences is not, you don't have, it's not, the units of occurrence aren't inches. It's just a number. It's, a, it's an integer value. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. You need an integer. That's why I have seal. And, um, great. So, so what if we change that now? What if we change that to 2? We should have twice the number of whole spacings. And we do. Look at that. Uh, twice the number of occurrences. I'm sorry, not whole spacing. Uh, twice the number of occurrences, and we do. So that's fun. We just improved this spreadsheet. We'll have to upload this. But this is not reflected over here in the length of the um, pattern, which is going to be basically our number of occurrences times our uh, this value 4. Oh, you know what? Let me make this dimensions dot pole spacing divided by one millimeter. Um, so it's going to be our number of occurrences minus one since um, are we doing minus one? I think because we already have our first hole. Sorry, it's been a while since I looked at this. But anyway, um, this number four is going to be... It's actually four inches. It's the um, the hole spacing. But we can just do times dimensions that hole spacing. And look at that. 12 inches, just the same as what we had. Um, so no change there. So okay, so we just improved this. We can save it now. So check this out. If we wanted to do a whole spacing of one inch, now we have... Ooh la la, look at that. And that's one inch centers. So it looks a little funny because it's one inch off of the edge to the center of this and then one inch between centers. Um, but hey, that's nice. You know, a more realistic looking thing would be, I don't know, three and a half inch centers and a two inch offset or one and three quarter. And, you know, something like that. Or just a three-quarter inch offset. You know, you can play with this. It's, it's a whole lot of fun. Okay, so that's how this model is created. And I hope this video was helpful. Um, and um, any questions, you can leave them on the YouTube video or, I don't know, email me. Okay, I hope this helped.